Welcome to the RVU OMM Mechanisms of Action series. This edition will look at the proposed mechanism of action of muscle energy technique. An understanding of muscle physiology is essential to explaining the proposed mechanism of action of muscle energy technique. So let's review the relevant aspects of physiology first. Skeletal muscle is composed of bundles of extrafusal muscle fibers. These are innervated by the efferent alpha motor neurons in the ventral roots of the spinal cord and are supplied with afferent sensory nerve fibers which travel in the dorsal spinal roots, specifically group 1A and group 2. There are also fusiform, or spindle-shaped, intrafusal muscle fibers that are parallel to extrafusal muscle fibers. Each end of the intrafusal muscle fibers are attached to extrafusal muscle fibers. This parallel orientation ensures that as extrafusal muscle length changes, a simultaneous change is experienced by the intrafusal muscle fibers. The length of the intrafusal muscle fibers are regulated by the gamma motor neuron. There are three monitoring systems of skeletal muscles relevant to muscle energy technique. The first are the Golgi tendon organs, which monitor tension and muscle force. The Golgi tendon organs are in series with the extrafusal muscle fibers and lie within muscle tendons. Afferent group 1B sensory nerve fibers carry the impulses from the Golgi tendon organs to the spinal cord, which then affect an interneuron, which then activates alpha motor neurons of the same muscle. This allows the Golgi tendon organ to inhibit muscle contraction when it senses excessive tension of the monitored muscle to prevent muscle injury. The remaining monitoring systems are proprioceptive and located within the intrafusal muscle fiber spindles. One system consists of annulospiral endings which send proprioceptive information, specifically length and rate of change in length, to the spinal cord via group 1A afferent fibers. The second system consists of flower spray endings which send proprioceptive information, specifically stretch and absolute length, to the spinal cord via group 2 afferent fibers. Now that we have reviewed that, Let's get back to the muscle energy technique. There are six types of mechanisms for muscle energy. The first mechanism is post-isometric relaxation. Immediately after an isometric contraction, the neuromuscular apparatus is in a refractory state, during which passive stretching may be performed without encountering strong myotactic reflex opposition. The patient is asked to activate the tight muscle side of the dysfunction in an attempt to move the joint away from the restricted barrier, the direction of ease. The operator isometrically resists the action, and the muscle's Golgi tendon body receptors are stimulated. A Golgi body reflex is completed through the spinal cord to inhibit the contraction of the muscle containing the stimulated Golgi bodies. Once the gamma gain mechanism of the muscle is reset by muscle energy activation in the direct treatment method, the somatic dysfunction will clear. The second mechanism is joint mobilization using muscle force. Distortion of articular relationships and motion loss result in reflex hypertonicity of the musculature crossing the dysfunctional joint, which tends to compress the joint surfaces, resulting in thinning of the intervening layer of synovial fluid and adherence of joint surfaces. Restoration of motion to the articulation results in a gapping or receding of the distorted joint with reflex relaxation of the previously hypertonic musculature. The third mechanism is respiratory assistance. Muscular force, or activating force, of the technique is generated by the simple act of breathing. It may be direct respiratory muscles or motion transmitted to the spine, pelvis, and extremities in response to ventilation. The physician applies a fulcrum against which the respiratory forces can work. The fourth mechanism is reciprocal inhibition. If the tight muscle cannot be adequately contracted for some reason, that muscle's antagonistic group can be utilized. Contraction initiated of the agonist muscle simultaneously initiates a reflex relaxation of the antagonistic muscle group. The fifth mechanism is the oculocephalogyric reflex. Functional muscle groups are contracted in response to voluntary eye motion of the patient. These eye movements reflexively affect the cervical and truncal musculature as the body attempts to follow the lead provided by eye motion. This is used to produce gentle post-isometric relaxation or reciprocal inhibition. The sixth mechanism is the crossed extensor reflex. 
This technique relies on the learned cross-pattern locomotion reflexes ingrained into the CNS. When the flexor muscle group in one extremity is contracted voluntarily, the flexor muscle group in the contralateral extremity relaxes and the contralateral extensor group contracts. All right, so now you know how muscle energy technique works. And remember, as A.T. Still says, an osteopath reasons from his or her knowledge of anatomy and physiology. This has been an episode of the RVU OMM Mechanisms of Action series.